Containers are kind of like virtual machines with a couple big differences. So first, let's talk about physical machines and then we'll understand how everything works kind of from the ground up. Computers need hardware to operate. Think CPU, RAM, and disk. On top of that hardware, we install an operating system like Mac, Linux, or Windows. The operating system interfaces with the hardware and handles low-level tasks on behalf of the applications that it runs. Within the OS, we run applications, things like Google Chrome, Discord, Slack, or even a custom web server, really anything that you'd use on your computer. And this setup works great on a local machine because all the apps can talk to each other. You can trust them, and usually that's what you want. You might want Photoshop to be able to edit an image and then be able to import that image directly back into Premiere. But if you want those apps to be isolated for security or other reasons, the operating system alone isn't really the solution that you want. Imagine you're a cloud provider selling access to server hardware. Your customers use your hardware to run their backend servers, but renting one full server could cost like I don't know, a hundred bucks a month, which is really expensive if all you're doing is say, hosting a static site. Virtual machines or VMs solve this problem by allowing you to split a physical machine into smaller isolated virtual machines. So for example, if a machine that you rented cost $100 a month, but you're able to split it into five virtual machines, now maybe each can be rented for just $20 a month. And each virtual machine's operating system can run its own applications. And those applications are isolated from the other applications running on the other virtual machines. Now, the big issue with this is that VMs are actually pretty resource intensive. Each one runs its own full operating system, which adds a lot of overhead. So if you run 10 VMs on one machine, a lot of resources are going to run those 10 different operating systems and containers solve this problem. They maintain the isolation that VMs provide, at least for most use cases, but they share the host operating system. So they avoid the performance overhead of multiple full operating system instances. So instead of hardware, many operating systems and applications, we now have hardware, one operating system, many containers, and then applications inside those containers. This architecture allows isolated processes to run much more efficiently. Now, containers aren't always the best tool, but if all you're trying to do is run isolated processes, containers are usually a better fit than full VMs.